In this video I'm going to show you how to apply the impulse and momentum theorem to find the change in momentum and the impulse for an object acted upon by a variable force. So we have a mass of 2 kilograms initially moving along the y-axis with a speed of 2 meters per second. At time t equals 0 a force f in the positive y direction is applied to the object for 3 seconds. The force varies according to time according to the equation f of t equals 9t minus 3t squared where f is in newtons and t is in seconds. So the first question is what are the units of the constants in this equation? For example the 9 and the 3. And the trick to this is that the force is in newtons which means each of the terms in the expression for the force also has to be in newtons. So 9 times t is in newtons and 9 is in seconds so therefore sorry t is in seconds so 9 is in newtons per second so that's newtons per second and we do the same thing with 3t squared 3 in t is in seconds squared and that whole expression has to be in newtons so 3 must be in newtons per second squared so that's newtons per second squared Next we want to calculate the final speed of the particle after three seconds. So to do that we apply the impulse momentum theorem which says that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And to calculate the impulse by a variable force we need to integrate that force with respect to t over the time interval for which the force is acting. In this case zero to three seconds. So zero to three seconds are the limits on my integral and I plug in my force function 9 times t minus 3t squared dt and then I take my antiderivative and I ask myself what is the function whose derivative is 9t so I raise the power by 1 I get t squared and I divide by the new, new power so that's 9 halves minus 3t squared the antiderivative of that raise the power by 1 I get t cubed and divide by the new power three by three divided by three is one so I have nine halves t squared minus t cubed and I'm going to evaluate that at the limits of zero and three so to do that I first plug in the top limit nine halves times three squared minus three cubed and then I plug in the bottom limit zero which is 9 halves 0 squared minus 0 cubed which is just 0. So 9 halves 3 squared 3 squared is 9, 9 times 9 is 81 half of 81 is 40.5 3 cubed is 27 and 40.5 minus 27 is 13 and a half Newton seconds. So the impulse and thus the change in momentum of the object is 13 and a half Newton seconds. So the object starts at 2 meters per second, it's 2 kilograms, so let's plug that in. J equals change in momentum, so 13 and a half Newton seconds is mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. And the mass is 2 kilograms times v final minus 2 kilograms for the mass times v initial 2 meters per second. So that is 2 times v final minus 4 and I'll scroll down a little bit here so I have some more room. So that's equal to 13 and a half Newton seconds and so 4 plus 13 and a half is 17 and a half Newton seconds is 2 times v final. So v final is 8.75 meters per second. So just a quick recap. If I have a variable force then what I have to do is I have to integrate with respect to time. I plug in the function. I take its antiderivative by raising the power and dividing by that new power for each term in my function. I plug in the final and the initial
values for my limits and I solve for the impulse. And that impulse is equal to the change in momentum, which is mv final minus mv initial. Substituting in the numbers, I got v final is 8.75 meters per second.